number six in the name of the Honourable David Cunliffe. Quick point of order, Mr. Speaker. The question point is directed of order, the Honourable David Cunliffe. to the Minister of Finance, who, with a bit of luck, is about to re-enter the chamber. Perhaps not. In the absence of a minister, uh, I seek your guidance. The member was the member was present in the order. chamber, sir, order. just a few minutes order. ago. Order. Order. The member will resume his seat and knows that it's not consistent with standing orders to, ref to refer to the absence of any member from the chamber. It is not his responsibility who answers a question, it is his responsibility to ask it. And I invite the member to do so. Point of order, the Honourable Dr. Michael. I'm not ruling at all because it is legitimate for a member to seek an assurance that the minister hasn't suddenly disappeared from the chamber to avoid answering a particular question when he would be available. Order. And that was often done by your colleagues in the order. past. Mr. Order. Now, Dr. Cullen, of all people, you know that is not an appropriate point of order. I invite the Honourable, the Honourable Member to ask his... his Speaking uh, to the point of order, Mr Speaker, and without wishing to challenge your ruling, the particular reason I asked it was that I could see the Member concerned order. through the glass door. Order. The, the Member is at risk of, of challenging my ruling. My ruling is that he will ask his question. It's up to the Government who answers it. The Honourable David Cunliffe. Mr Speaker. Mr Speaker, to the Minister of Finance. Does he stand by his statement about the Prime Minister that getting on these bloody planes he comes back with ten different things? I just say, we'll look at that. The occasional one you just say, that's not going to work. And if so, which of the Prime Minister's ideas has he rejected? Speaker. The Honourable Stephen Joyce. Mr Speaker, on behalf of the Minister of Finance, the Honourable Prime Minister welcomes free and creative discussions in his team where innovative ideas can be freely debated. I can understand if this is an environment which is not what that member will have been used to back when he was a minister. <laughs> the Honourable David Cunliffe. Order. Order. The members may let their, their colleague ask a question. Honourable David Cunliffe. Supplementary, Mr Speaker. To the Minister, has he had any free and fruitful discussions with the Prime Minister about his off-the-cuff suggestion in yesterday's press conference that Fisher and Paykel may be in need of a bailout? Or does he believe that such speculation may risk further undermining confidence? in a publicly listed company. The Honourable Stephen Joyce. Mr Speaker, on behalf of the Minister of Finance, as the Prime Minister has said previously last month and also yesterday, we have said consistently that consideration of government financial support would be possibly provided to uh, corporates if required very much as a last resort. The the Honourable Mr. David Speaker. Supplementary, Mr Speaker. Chris Tremaine. Thank you, Mr Speaker. I had already called, I had and called. I believe you had accepted the call. Order. Members are normally pretty generous on the way the House flows, and I was very grateful for the, Honor the Honourable Annette King, the way she let Jeanette Fitzsimons take the call when I made a mistake. Now, I ask the member to be reasonable. If he insists, I do have to accept he made the first call, and if he insists, I will go to him. Mr Speaker, no objection. However, I will uh, draw on Chris the wording of the previous answer. Supplementary. Uh, to the minister. What other ideas has the Minister seen for effectively managing our way through the current recession? Mr the Honourable Speaker, Stephen Joyce. On behalf of the Minister of Finance, uh, none at all from the opposition, but apparently its finance spokesperson is working on something and hopes to have it ready in time before the next election or perhaps before the next global recession. The Honourable David Mr Speaker. Speaker. Does the consistency to which the Minister previously referred include uh, his previous comments that, quote, imagine the billion dollars just spent on Air New Zealand and the People's Bank that could have been invested in fixing infrastructure. The government is running loose with hard-earned taxes and debt. It should make you sweat. Or is that one of the things you say in opposition but not in government? The Honourable Stephen Joyce. Uh, Mr Speaker, on behalf of the Minister of Finance, uh, in light of the current global financial recession, we have said consistently over the last month that we would consider uh, government financial support 
but again very much as a last resort. Supplementary, Mr. Speaker. The Honourable David Cunliffe. Mr. Mr. Speaker, can the Minister confirm, as referred to yesterday by the Prime Minister, that the operations and mandate of the Overseas Investment Office is currently under review by a ministerial subcommittee that will be reporting to Cabinet by March 2008? And when will the Government make publicly available the objectives and terms of reference of this review? Or is it the Government's practice to conduct economically critical discussions in secret? The Hon. Stephen Joyce. Uh, it won't. Mr Speaker, on behalf of the Minister of Finance, uh, no, they are not being asked to report back in time for March 2008. We come now to supplementary, supplementary question, the Hon. Trevor Mallard. Mr Speaker, has, to the Minister of Finance, has the Prime Minister given Fisher & Paykel appliances an undertaking that that company will not be allowed to collapse? The Hon. Stephen Joyce. Mr Speaker, on behalf of the Minister of Finance, can I say that our primary method of supporting the corporate sector is to ensure that the banking sector is sound. We have then said that any companies having difficulty would be asked to explore every commercial option before considering any approach to government, and, and that if any consideration of government financial support would be needed, it would be very much as a last resort. Speaker. Point of order, the Honourable Trevor Mallard. Uh, Mr Speaker, while that was a very good general answer, the question was a very specific one. Has the Prime Minister given an assurance to Fisher and Paykel? I, there are a couple of problems with what the, the member is seeking me to assist him with. The first is that, that the Minister uh, is not responsible for what the Prime Minister may or may not have said to Fisher and Paykel. And secondly, the question is getting very specific when there was a very general primary question, and I think the t matter has therefore been taken as far as it can be. Well, can I, can I ask, Speak on, 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 speaking to the, to the point of order, and I thank you for your tolerance on this, uh, sir, when Prime Ministers make pronouncements in areas of responsibility of Ministers, then it is certainly within the Minister's responsibility uh, to answer. I, I think, sir, if you ask the order, Minister now, order, he now, he now, order, knows, he now knows the answer to the question. Takes. I have heard sufficient, and the Minister does not have responsibility for what the Prime Minister may or may not have said, and that is the end order. He is not answering as the Prime Minister. He is not answering as the Prime Minister.